in this topic that is the general thermal analysis that uh, we will discuss about the two different cases for the thermal analysis so you have already studied that in the absence of any work interaction such as electric resistance heating the conservation of energy equation for uh, the steady flow of a fluid in a tube can be expressed by this expression where q dot is the rate of heat transfer from or to the fluid where m dot is the mass flow rate and cp is the heat capacity where te and ti are the mean fluid temperatures at the inlet and ta is the mean fluid temperature at the outlet so the temperature of a fluid flowing in a tube remains constant in the absence of any energy interactions through the wall of the tube if the heat is being added in the in the system or in the tube so the temperature of the fluid will increase if the heat is being removed from the system or from the tube through the wall of the tube so the temperature of the fluid will decrease so the thermal conditions at the surface of the wall can usually be approximated with reasonable accuracy to be constant surface temperature so this is the first topic that we will study that is the constant surface temperature in the first case on the first topic that we will, we will study uh, in the in the upcoming uh, slides that uh, uh, the the surface temperature is constant ts is constant or the second topic that we will study is the constant surface heat flux so these are the two main topics that we will study in the upcoming slide for example at the constant surface temperature condition is realized when the phase change process such as boiling or the condensation occurs at the outer surface of the tube for example this is a tube and if there is any process such as condensation or the boiling process so uh, in any of the case the surface temperature remains constant so in the heat exchanger in most of the cases uh, 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 on the on the outer surface of the tubes in the heat exchangers so there may be the the condensation process or there may be the boiling process so so in that case the outer surface temperature of the tube will remains constant so in an, in the second scenario that we will study in the upcoming slide that the constant surface heat flux condition when the tube is subjected to the radiation or the electric resistance heating uniformly from all the directions so in that case the surface heat flux is actually represented by this expression which is q dot s which is uh, the 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 surface heat flux and hx is the local heat transfer coefficient and ts is the surface temperature and the tm is the mean fluid temperature so one thing that you need to uh, understand that the mean fluid temperature tm of the fluid flowing in a tube must change during the heating or the cooling so if if we are adding heat into the system the mean fluid temperature will rise if we are removing the heat from the system or from the tube the mean fluid temperature tm will decrease so so the the increment or the decrement of this tm will ultimately depends upon whether you are heating the system or you, you are cooling the system so the next is the hx which is in most of the cases is the <coughs> sorry in most of the cases uh, is the convective heat transfer coefficient and it is constant so uh, the remaining two parameters in these two equation in this equation are the ts or the the the, the surface heat flux if the surface heat flux will remain constant so what does it mean the ts will change or if the surface temperature is constant in that case the heat flux will be changing so so these two parameters cannot be remain constant such as q dot s and the ts these two parameters cannot be remain constant if the one is constant such as for example ts surface temperature is constant so definitely the the heat flux will be changing in the second scenario if the qx is constant uh, qs is constant the surface temperature will be changing 
So, so the next case is we will consider the convective heat transfer uh, for these two common cases. The first is the constant uh, uh, surface heat flux and the second we will study the constant surface temperature. So this is the first scenario in which the constant surface heat flux, the Q dot S is constant. So consider we have a tube and the, heat, uh, and the fluid is moving inside the tube and we are providing the constant heat flux to the surface of the tube. So if the, sur the, the surface heat flux is constant, so obviously the surface temperature will be changing. So this is the diagram which actually shows the temperature profile of the fluid which is flowing inside the tube and the temperature profile of the surface temperature. So as you can see that along the length of the tube right so at this point the length is 0 of the tube and at this point the length is L. So from left to right the, the length is increasing of the increasing length of the tube. In this case you can see that you are applying the constant heat flux uh, on the on the outer surface of the tube what you will see that the inlet temperature the inlet mean mean temperature is lower and the outlet or the exit mean temperature is higher obviously the 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 fluid temperature will increase so if the fluid temperature is increasing so obviously the surface temperature is also increasing actually this is the reverse case you are applying the flux on the outer surface of the tube so what will happen uh, the, the the external surface temperature will rise and if the external surface temperature will rise the fluid which is flowing inside the tube and its temperature will also rise so so the, the there is the fully developed region or the fully developed region inside the tube after some after some after some point and this this at, at this point or in this region you can say that there are some some entrance effect where the temperature profile or the surface temperature profile is not is not a straight line this is because of the entrance effect and after some time and after some distance the 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 uh, there is a linear linear increase in the surface temperature of the tube and there is a linear increase in the fluid temperature and the fluid temperature will rise from ti to te and the surface temperature will also increase one thing we have that you need to uh, keep in mind that the the difference between the temperature in the fully developed region is is constant so at this point the ts is same and at this point the ts is also same so in case of q in qs or the uh, the constant surface heat flux is constant the rate of heat transfer can be expressed by this expression so if we want to determine the exit temperature or the mean mean fluid temperature at the exit tube so so the exit temperature can be calculated from this expression so what you have you can see that the surface area of the tube is constant mass flow rate is constant the cp of the fluid is constant you are also considering that the constant surface heat flux so this parameter is constant so you just uh, determine the inlet temperature and after putting all the values you will get the value of the exit temperature so keep in mind that the mean fluid temperature increases linearly in the flow direction so this is the mean fluid temperature and it is also increasing in, 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 in the flow direction in case of constant surface heat flux. Since the surface area increases linearly in the flow direction, so at this point the surface area is less when the flow is move, uh, is at this point inside the tube the surface area is increasing. So surface area increases linearly but we will consider this surface area is constant because uh, 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 a is equal to the perimeter perimeter and the distance of the tube and this parameter is considered is constant uh, a is equal to the perimeter perimeter is the linear length of the tube which is constant uh, times the tube length which is l so we will see that the perimeter uh, formula in the upcoming slide so the surface temperature in case of constant surface heat flux can be expressed by this formula this is uh, this is the famous law um, uh, which is the newton's law of cooling and the modified form so if you if you rearrange this equation you will have this expression this is ts so in this case this ratio 
the the constant surface heat flux divided by the convective heat transfer coefficient this is constant and and this tm is the mean fluid temperature so by the using this expression you can easily determine the surface temperature from this expression you can determine the exit temperature and from this expression you can easily determine the surface temperature so in case of fully developed region the surface temperature will increase linearly in the direction of the flow and uh, we know that the convective heat transfer coefficient is also constant so i have already said uh, earlier that the difference between the surface temperature and the mean fluid temperature is also constant so the slope of the mean fluid temperature this tm on this tx diagram can be determined by multiplying the steady flow energy balance to a tube slice of a thickness dx as it can be seen here in this diagram we can apply the energy balance and after applying the energy balance we have uh, uh, this expression and after rearranging that the dtm over the the change in the mean fluid temperature in the direction of the uh, the uh, uh, x uh, can be expressed as this expression and this is actually a constant qs and the perimeter perimeter and the mass flow rate and the cp these are all constant so this is the first expression that you need to keep in mind and this is the second expression how we can determine this expression this this second expression can be determined from this formula if we uh, derivate this expression with respect to x so this will become ds dts over dx is equal to dtm over dx this is a constant if we derivate this constant this will be this part will become zero so after uh, uh, taking derivative on both side with respect to x of this equation we will have this second expression right this is the first expression this is the second expression and this is the third expression which is known as the dimensionless temperature profile which is which remains actually unchanged in the fully developed region so uh, so we have said that uh, the difference between the surface temperature and the mean fluid temperature this difference will remain constant in the fully developed region so we will take this parameter outside and if we apply the differential on uh, 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 the differential uh, d by uh, del by del x uh, to t s minus t we will have this expression and after simplifying that we will have this expression dt over dx dts over dx so we have total three expressions one this is 2 and this is 3 if we combine these three expressions we will ultimately have this expression so dtx is equal to dts over dx which is actually this expression and dts over dx is is actually equal to dtm over dx right and dtm over dx is actually equal to this this expression which is actually a constant so here perimeter can of a tube can be opened such as 2 pi r and the mass flow rate can also be opened such as the density in the uh, the mean the mean velocity and the area of the tube so after simplifying that we will have this expression dt over uh, dx which is which which is which is equal to constant what does it mean how what 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 we can conclude from this that in the fully developed flow in a tube subjected to the constant surface heat flux the temperature gradient is independent of x thus the shape of the temperature profile does not change along the tube so this is the second topic in which uh, uh, the flow is the uh, the flow of a fluid in a tube where, where the surface temperature is constant but the constant uh, but the surface flux is not constant it is changing right so from the newton's law of cooling the rate of heat transfer to or from the fluid can be determined um, from this expression right so where h is the average convective heat transfer coefficient and as is the heat transfer surface area which in most of the cases uh, in case of a circular pipe that is pi dl and t t average which is uh, some appropriate average temperature difference between the fluid or and the surface so so there are two two cases so there are two ways of expressing this delta t average 
so the first case is in the constant surface temperature and where the ts is constant so the t the t average can be uh, approximated or uh, by the arithmetic mean temperature difference as tm by using this expression so delta ti this is uh, the temperature difference between the surface temperature and minus the inlet uh, mean fluid temperature and plus the delta te which is actually the difference uh, 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 temperature between the surface temperature and the exit temperature if you rearrange this expression so you will have this expression and here ti plus t exit divided by 2 which is uh, known as the uh, inlet and the outlet temperature <coughs> divided by 2 and this can be expressed as tb where this expression tb is known as the bulk mean fluid temperature which is the arithmetic average of the mean fluid temperature at inlet and at the exit of the tube now one thing that we need to keep in mind that that the arithmetic mean temperature difference this tm is simply the average of the temperature differences between the surface and the fluid at the inlet and the exit of the tube so the assumption that the mean fluid temperature varies so this this mean fluid temperature varies along the length of the tube which is hardly ever the case when the surface temperature is constant so this simple approximation that often gives us the acceptable results but not always so so we need a better way to evaluate this average temperature so what we need to do is we we consider the heating of a fluid in a tube of a constant cross section whose inner surface is maintained at the constant temperature ts we know that the mean temperature of the fluid tm will rise right and it will increase in the flow direction as a result of the heat transfer right therefore the energy balance uh, on a control differential volume as we have seen that in 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 this slide in this slide we will apply the energy balance on on, on this uh, differential element so this differential element uh, the energy balance would be uh, in such a way that the the <coughs> m dot cp delta t m that is uh, uh, the increase in the energy of the fluid uh, is equal to the heat transfer to the fluid from the tube surface by the convection process right so this is this is the energy balance that we apply on the small differential element so keep in mind that if the surface temperature of the fluid uh, uh, of of this tube is constant and the flow is moving from left to right and the flow is mo moving is from left to right where the inlet temperature is ti and the outlet temperature is t uh, t e t e or the exit temperature is t e the mean fluid temperature is ultimately rises because it will take some heat from from this uh, from this surface whereas the surface temperature will remain constant so ultimately the mean fluid temperature will rise as uh, in the direction of the flow or in the direction of the flow or or as uh, the length of the tube will increases so here the mean fluid temperature is just like this and at this point the mean fluid temperature uh, is is at this point so along the length of the tube the mean fluid temperature will increase so so delta ti will actually the difference between the surface temperature and the inlet temperature and the t delta t e is the difference between the surface temperature minus uh, the exit temperature so in this case in this case where the t s or the surface temperature remains constant this delta t this delta t will not remain constant will not remain constant right so this delta t will not remain constant as we have we, we said that in, in this case 
Ts minus Tm, this, this is the average temperature. This is changing this parameter or the, this delta T average, this delta T average, which is actually the difference between Ts minus Tm, which actually changes along the length of the tube, right? It can be seen over here. When we try to solve uh, this topic uh, by considering the constant surface temperature. So, so in order to, in order to uh, simplify this case, so we apply the energy balance, right, on a small differential element. So here the dA, dAs, which is the differential surface area, can be written as the P, which is the parameter, it has the unit length and dx is also the unit length. The unit length multiplied by the unit length will, which actually gives you the area, right? And this dTm, which actually can be written as minus d uh, into Ts minus Tm. When you open this expression, when you take the differential and when you open this expression, you ultimately get this delta Tm. So, uh, after putting the value of dA, here and dm over here after rearranging you will have this expression and this is the differential equation when you integrate this equation by uh, putting the limits or boundary condition at x is equal to 0 uh, tm is equal to ti right at x is equal to 0 the mean fluid temperature is equal to ti at x is equal to l the the mean fluid temperature will be equal to Te. After putting the boundary condition and integrating this equation, after integrating and putting the boundary condition, you will have this expression. From this expression, from this expression, you can just simplify this expression by taking the exit temperature on one side while taking all the other parameters on the other hand side, right? So, if you know this uh, inlet temperature and if you know the surface temperature and if you know the other parameters such as the convective heat transfer coefficient, the surface area, the mass flow rate and the heat capacity, you can easily determine the exit temperature. So in this expression, the one mo most important parameter is the, the ratio of the convective heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the surface area over the mass flow rate multiplied by the CP. This is known as NTU, which is known as simply known as the number of transfer units. So so uh, in the convective heat transfer coefficient you you sometimes determine uh, simply the number of transfer units so if the number of transfer units is less than 1 the heat uh, uh, the exit temperature change will be very high or uh, appreciable change in the exit temperature can be observed so in this case when you see that the the number of transfer unit is increasing the exit temperature is also increasing so after the uh, the the value of 5 of ntu number of transfer unit when the number of transfer unit increases from 5 to 10 the exit temperature change is very small what does that mean uh, the heat uh, transfer uh, will be effective and the maximum heat transfer will occur when the ntu is less than 5 when the NTU is, is, is greater than 5, what, what we can see that the exit temperature of the fluid will become equal to the surrounding temperature. So it will not change appreciably. So, so this NTU will actually give us uh, the measure of the effectiveness of heat transfer system. So if you can determine this NTU easily, you can easily tell us that the effectiveness of uh, heat transfer in the particular system. So the next is um, using the same expression, using the same expression, when you rearrange this expression um, into this way by taking the MCP on one side while taking all other parameters on the other side and if you put this expression into this expression MCP and in MCP is replaced by this expression you will have a very very long expression over here and which will be equal to Q dot is equal to uh, uh, a very long expression over here right this is first expression and the second expression is that so the second expression is this which is given uh, at the start of the topic. So when you compare this second expression with this 
first expression and after putting the mcp value m dot cp value from here so when you compare these two expression you will have this long expression which is the true representation of the log mean temperature difference so the log mean temperature difference delta t ln is obtained by tracing the actual temperature profile of the fluid along the length of the tube and it is exact representation of the average temperature difference between the fluid and the surface temperature and it truly reflects the exponential decay of the local temperature difference when the delta t e from differs from delta t i by no more than 40 percent the error in using the arithmetic mean temperature difference is less than one percent but but the error in increases to undesirable level when delta t e differs from the delta t i by greater amounts therefore we should always use the log mean temperature difference when determining the convective heat transfer in a tube whose surface is maintained at the constant temperature ts so the next topic is the analogies between the momentum and the heat transfer so in most of the cases uh, in the force convection analysis we are primarily interested in the determination of the quantities such as the coefficient of friction uh, to calculate the shear stress at the wall and the nozzle number uh, which is actually used to calculate the convective heat transfer coefficient or uh, the heat transfer rates so therefore it is very desirable to have a relationship between the uh, coefficient of friction and the nozzle number so that we can calculate the one parameter when the other parameter is available so if the if the coefficient of friction is available you can easily calculate the nozzle number if if the nozzle number available you can easily calculate the coefficient of friction so such relations are developed on the basis of the similarity between the momentum and the heat transfer in the boundary layers and these expressions are known as the Reynolds analogy and the Chilton Colburn analogy so the first expression that we have uh, the relationship between the nozzle number and the coefficient of friction is given here and this relationship is known as the Reynolds analogy which is particularly useful for the parental number is equal to 1 if you have the nozzle number you can calculate the coefficient of friction similarly if you have the coefficient of friction you can calculate the nozzle number and from the nozzle number we can we can calculate the heat transfer rates and the convective heat transfer coefficient and from the coefficient of friction we can calculate the wall shear stresses and this particular expression is particularly useful for the parental number is equal to 1 so the Reynolds analogy can be expressed uh, by modifying the expression this is the modified expression which ultimately related to another number that is known as Stanton number which is also known as the dimensionless, dimensionless heat transfer coefficient and this expression is particularly useful for the parental number is equal to 1 so Stanton number is particularly expressed by uh, in terms of the nozzle number the Reynolds number and the parental number but but keep in mind that this expression is also useful for uh, the parental number is equal to one so the coefficient of friction and the nozzle number for a flat plate can be expressed by these two expressions right so the coefficient of friction uh, uh, for a flow of a fluid on a flat plate can be expressed by this expression which is ultimately the relationship in terms of the Reynolds number uh, the Reynolds number and the nozzle number uh, uh, for a flow of a fluid on a flat plate can be expressed by this expression which is uh, uh, in terms of parental number and the Reynolds number when you take the ratio of these two numbers and ultimately you will have a modified Reynolds analogy or simply known as the Chilton Coleman analogy and this is the modified expression when you take the ratio of these two numbers this modified expression is simply used for the parental number which is in between the range of 0.6 to 60 and this JH factor is known as the Colburn J factor and this factor could be used for the designing of the heat exchanger we will see this parameter when we design the shell and tube heat exchanger so let's talk about the natural convection in this topic I will talk about the physical mechanism of uh, <clears throat> natural convection many familiar heat transfer application involves natural convection as the primary mechanism of heat transfer some examples are cooling off electric 
equipment such as uh, power transistors, TVs and VCRs. So uh, the other examples include the heat transfer from electric baseboard heaters or steam radiators, heat transfer from refrigeration coils and the power transmission lines and the heat transfer from the bodies of the animals and the human beings. Natural convection in gases is usually accompanied by the radiation of comparable magnitude except for low emissivity surfaces. We know that a hot boiled egg or a hot baked potato on a plate eventually cools to the surrounding air temperature as you can see in this diagram. right? So the egg is cooled by transferring heat by convection to the air and the radiation to the surrounding surfaces. So neglecting the heat transfer by the radiation, the physical mechanism of cooling a hot egg or any hot object in a cooler environment can be explained as follows. Such as the hot egg is exposed to the cooler air what will happen the temperature of the outer surface of the egg shell will drop somewhat or slightly and the temperature of the air which is adjacent to the shell will rise as a result of heat conduction from the shell to the air. Consequently the egg will soon be surrounded by a thin layer of the warmer air and the heat will then be transferred from this warmer air to the outer layers of air. The cooling process in this case would be rather slow since the egg would always be blanketed by the warm air and it would have no direct contact with the cooler air farther away. We may notice any air motion in the vicinity of the egg but careful measurement indicates otherwise. The temperature of the air adjacent to the egg is higher and its density is lower. Since at constant pressure the density of a gas is inversely proportional to its temperature. Thus we have a situation in which some low density or light gas is surrounded by the high density or the heavy gas and the natural law indicates that the lighter the gas will rise up. So what will happen the, the space which is uh, vacated by the warmer air in the vicinity of the egg is replaced by the cooler air nearby and the presence of the cooler air in the vicinity of the egg speeds up the cooling process. The rise of the warmer air and the flow of the cooler air into its place continues until the egg is cooled to the temperature of the surrounding air. This motion that's, that results from the continual replacement of the heated air in the vicinity of the egg by the cooler air nearby is called the natural convection. And the heat transfer is uh, enhanced as a result of this natural convection current is called the natural convection heat transfer. The one thing that you have to note that in, in the absence of the natural convection currents, the heat transfer from the egg to the air, it would be only by the conduction process and the heat, and the heat transfer rate from the egg would be much lower. So let us just try to understand the determination of the convective heat transfer coefficient from the drag measurements. So let us uh, take an example. So, a 2 into 3 meter flat plate is uh, suspended in a room and is subjected to the air flow parallel to its surface along its 3 meter long side. So this is a flat plate and the air is moving from upward to downward along its length which is 3 meter. So, the free stream temperature and the velocity of the air are 20 degrees centigrade and the velocity of the air is 7 meter per second. The total force, uh, drag force acting on the plate is measured by uh, 0.86 Newton. 
so what you have to do is you have to determine the average convective heat transfer coefficient for the plate so uh, uh, from this question statement what comes in our mind that you are given with the drag force so what you can see that from the drag force we can have an expression for the uh, uh, coefficient of friction and from the coefficient of friction we can have the expression for the nozzle number and from the nozzle number we can have the value of the convective heat transfer coefficient let's have a look on the solution so the solution is the flat plate is subjected to the airflow and the drag force acting on it is measured and the average convective heat transfer coefficient is to be determined so before going uh, into the solution let's take uh, the few assumptions the first is the steady operating condition exists and the edge effects are negligible in this particular example and the local atmospheric pressure is 180 m so for the air we need some properties uh, that uh, we can take from uh, the book uh, uh, that is uh, heat transfer a practical approach from table A15 and for uh, the air temperature is 20 degree centigrade and the atmospheric pressure is 180 m from these temperature pressure conditions we can have the density of the air which is 1.204 kilogram per meter cube and the heat capacity is CP 1.007 kilojoule per kg and similarly we can have the value of the parental number which is 0 0.7309 from these properties first of all we have to determine the surface area of the flat plate which is suspended vertically vertically a flow along the 3 meter side of the plate and thus the characteristic length is 3 meter because uh, the the flow of the air is along 3 meter length so that's why we are considering the characteristic length of the plate is 3 meter both side of the plates are exposed to the air and thus the total surface area is multiplied by 2 so w into l is the one side surface area if you multiply is by 2 so it it will count as uh, both side of the surface area so edges are negligible in this particular example so for the flat plate the drag force is equivalent to the friction force so so the average friction coefficient can be determined from this expression so the drag force is equal to the friction force friction force is actually connected with uh, this expression which has the friction coefficient if we rearrange this expression and we'll take the friction coefficient on one side and other all other parameters on the other hand side so we can see that we have the friction force value we have the density we have the value of the surface area we have the velocity of the air and after putting all the values we will have the friction coefficient which will be equal to 0 0.00243 and after having the value of the friction coefficient we have just uh, uh, seen that in the previous slide that if you have the friction coefficient then if you have the value of the parental number so from this uh, uh, Colburn analogy expression we can have the convective heat transfer coefficient this is the expression that we have studied in the previous slide uh, a few moments ago so if we have this expression for uh, the determination of the convective heat transfer coefficient we will take the convective heat transfer coefficient on one hand side and all other parameters on the other hand side or you can say the right hand side and after putting the values of the, uh, the friction coefficient and the density and the velocity and the heat capacity divided by the parental number and after simplifying this expression we can have the value of the convective heat transfer coefficient which will be equal to 12.7 watt per meter square per degree centigrade so this example exactly shows that the great utility of the momentum heat transfer analogies in that the convective heat transfer coefficient can be determined from the knowledge of the friction coefficient and which is actually easier to determine